find yourself eventually, is this person's going to crowd you. They'll have their elbows down on the mat, and they'll be bunching up your legs, kind of like this. And a lot of times, their knees are, yeah, they're just like this. It's a very frustrating position to be in. It doesn't offer me a lot of options here, okay? Um, it's hard to, it's hard, like, if the person leaves the hands, like, mm -hmm, on the center, it's very easy for me to manipulate those arms. But when they get down here and they're, like, bringing their knees to their hips and stuff, or their uh, elbows to their knees, really hard for, for me to do much, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We gotta get up some. So I'm gonna pull this person. So I wanna go back that way, but again, if I try to kick into the person, he's gonna push into me this way. So what a lot of times I'll try to do is if they're down here like this, I'll start to pull in so that he'll start to correct and I can follow him back up, okay? So again, a lot of times, like if you, if you do this on the feet, you'll find that if you want the person to step back, you pull them forward because they, they correct against it. So the same thing here. I want him to go back, so I'll pull him this way so that he starts to go this way and I'll follow him back up, okay? And as far as grips go, I'll grab on some part of the back of the armpit of the, of the arm and pull them in a little bit, as best I can. Now, once we get up, we're probably only going to be able to use an overhook. We probably will not be able to get an underhook. Very tough to get an underhook uh, under in the position. So we're going to play a wizard or, uh, or overhook, okay? A high overhook. So like the overhook that we use with right here with the elbow trap, that's great for trapping to the side that we're going to. But remember, on the side, I'm going to get ready to sweep them this way. On this one, a lot of times if I'm playing with this high overhook, this is the side that pulls up, okay? Now from here, everything else is about the same. We're going to immediately go ahead and, um, actually, no, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. He's going to drive me back down properly. Now, but this time I've got the overhook, so I've got something to work with, okay? So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to my side, and I'm going to place my leg on the, that's on the bottom right now, and I'm going to put this little, like, little pincher right here with my legs. So I've got my, my foot, or both of my feet latched onto a quad. This does a couple different things for me. One, if he tries to, for some reason, pass to my right, I'm going to start to walk to the right side. See how that the leg that's on the outside here is going to help prevent that right here, right? If I was like this, he could actually hop over so I could run to this side here, or even do a hop over to that side sometimes. Boom! Okay, okay. There's a little pincher here. He tries to hop over. And what's nice now, too, is if he even begins to start to move, to the other side, we have a sweep, okay? Which is what we're gonna look at first. And then we'll talk about setting up an arm lock or trying to choke something from me. So again, he's crowding me, elbows are tight. First job is grab the arm as best you can and use your legs to pull the person in just to kick up and come back up. From here, the person is immediately gonna drive you back down. As you get down, you wanna try to get to your side a little bit here and then you wanna get this leg latched on the back here. So this bottom leg here is just gonna go underneath and latch on. Now from here, the fight's gonna be you know difficult sometimes. Here's what I, a lot of times I'll start to do. If he starts to do this, I'll cut away tap and guillotine. So if he stays down, then we're gonna play the sweet game. But a lot of times you'll get into this position here. And as you're down, come your knees form here. Now I'm gonna get to my elbow. I'm on my elbow, I have at least some options. And then what I try to do in this position, because he's probably going to be really aggressive with his hand, and I, it's, I always have trouble grabbing the elbow in this one, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll snap and grab the wrist, okay? And then from here, come, in, come around, let's see you guys. You notice the hand goes to the body, and then I grab my own wrist. And now from here, we'll begin to sweep over to the side. And then because I'm coming up with an overhook, I'll either go to mount, or knee on belly to make sure he doesn't fight me back up together. Because if I come up to the side like this, he'll just come right like back up with that under. Okay. So the motion, real quick, so you can see. Okay, he's from here. I pull in, kick up. He gets the underhook. Like he drives me back down. And then what I'm going to do is get to my side. Get the little pincher here. Get up to my elbow. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to trap. And then from there, it's the same motion. Okay. Last time, you got to try it. So again, we're here, flatten. Pull up, kick up, with the overhook, go back down. Okay, from here, put the pincher in on the legs to block it from hopping over or being able to effectively pass either way. And again, I'm gonna sit up to my elbow here. When I'm ready, I'm gonna grab the wrist, pull to the body, and then again, to start to sweep, I pull the person up with my leg and my arm, close on the spot of foot, come up, come up, come up. Right here. Okay, or, or you, when you come up with the, um, the sweep, 
you have to think about what position you come up to. So if we're sweeping and our pulling arm, the one we use to pull the person up off their base, is an overhook. Essentially, that puts you in this position when you come up. This is not a good position to be inside control because the person has an underhook, right? If I come up and come down, if my pulling arm is the underhook, it's great because it puts me right in a great side control. Okay, just be mindful that if you come up with this, you're gonna either need to put a knee on belly or you're gonna need to step to mount, okay? Because you've gotta catch that, otherwise they're gonna pop right up or you're gonna just need to be able to step really far over really quickly. But typically it's much easier simply just to go down or knee on belly because you can pin the person down, okay? So that position that we were just at, where we had an overhook. So again, the reason we're playing this is because if someone's trying to keep you flat in, in butterfly guard, because butterfly guard works better when there's some momentum and some movement. Um, typically, okay, so especially if I can like scoot in and move, it's great. If I'm flattened out here, it's a really tough position to play from, okay? Now, this is important, we pull, kick, and again, I'm getting this overhook on to my side. The angle sometimes can help make up for that. Now right here, here's what's happening in this situation. Let's say that he's not pa passing to this side and he's not passing to this side. One of the other options is that people will try to pull out, okay? And if you let them, they'll be able to pull their arm out there and be back into square one, okay? But when you hold, first off, when you hold this overhook, it's not a loose overhook. I'm like, I'm guillotining a shoulder, basically. Like, I'm really, like, there's a, an active pinch here, okay? It'll wear you out at first because, again, like, a lot of times we build these like these muscles that can just hold like a, a, a fake, sort of a tight squeeze for a long period of time to jiu jitsu. But when I'm here, this arm, I mean, I'm tight on it right here. It's not just a loose squeeze. Like my my hand is doing this. Okay. Now, if he starts to pull out, you got a couple options. One, okay, he starts to pull out a little bit. You can immediately start to switch off to omoplatas, triangles. It's all there, right? You're switching right off into the position. And again, you're kind of limiting what his options are because you're taking away his ability to pass this way or this way easily. I'm not saying he couldn't, but easily. The other option is if he sits here for too long and you're up on your elbow, guillotine sitting right here. You can start to work the guillotine. And the guillotine from this position works it's sort of second, secondary as a great sweep. So if we get here and he starts to defend, we can use that as a sweep as well. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is, you know, I'll, be, I'll show you just kind of an option for like the we'll plot a triangle type thing, and then if not, I'll just show you, if you don't know how to do that kind of stuff, then I'll just show you this basic guillotine. But again, you guys can kind of play around in this last one a little bit, depending on what you might use, because long-legged people might prefer the triangle, shorter-legged people might prefer the guillotine or the we'll plot okay? So we're in the position, and again, we've got the overhook. I'm on my side, and I've got my little, little pincher here, right, with the, the, with the feet, okay? So the first one, he starts to pull back. As he pulls back, I would like to have control of this wrist here, making sure that's locked out. I'll place my foot on the hip. And then from here, you have a couple options. One is we can take this back leg, throw it over top of the face, and then you can go to the omoplata setup, okay? Right there. Okay, the other option is we're here in that position with that butterfly. I can immediately start to put both feet on the hips, and we can lock up and start to work our triangle attack. Okay, super simple for the guillotine if you guys want to play that. Okay, we're here. Let's say we're in this position, maybe back when we're fighting for that wrist, and he's not giving it to me. Well, if his head's here, perfect for coming in. Now, there's a couple ways to finish this. This is considered for the way, for some of the, for some of the people that are newer, this is an arm and guillotine. So a traditional guillotine is where the arms are out of the way. An arm and guillotine is right here with his arm inside the lock. There's different ways to finish it, but my favorite grip to use for this one, because I would get to this position back in the day, and you can get here, and if I get a good torque, it sometimes works, but if I change my grip just a little bit, to finish it. So check this out. If you've never done the reverse gable, go ahead and set it real quick with me. All right, so here's how you do it. So we've got, most of you are probably gonna choke with your right arm, okay? So go and take your right arm and get here like this. Okay, so we're here, and again, your guillotine is like this. You're pulling that elbow up high, and you're squeezing, all right? Now, here's the reverse grip. You're gonna take the lock that's inside of it. So go ahead and just follow with me. Take that hand and turn the thumb towards you until it goes down, and then we get rid of our thumbs and we lock here. Hold the position, I'm gonna come around to you. Go, no problems, so. 
Good. Relax a little bit. One more time. So your right hand's coming in. Your left hand starts by grabbing the wrist right here. And we're yanking up to change it. Um, we're changing it. Sorry, everybody looks like a pirate because we're all doing this, okay? Um, from here, take your right thumb, turn it towards you, like you're going me, and then keep going down, and then your hands lock back here. Okay, so a traditional gable grip, by the way, is this. Basically, you take two palms, little two little monkey hooks, and you just lash them onto each other here so you can hold. It's a very strong grip, hard to break. All we're doing is just changing that a little bit. And what that does is as we start to squeeze in, we start driving that, that wrist bone into the neck. It works great. So let's get to that last part. So from here, what we're doing is we sat up, we got the overhook, we're on our side, we're fighting here, right? I'm gonna go around, it's very simple. He's worried about me grabbing the wrist, especially you start doing this, right? You start reaching for that wrist, that hand's gonna come back. That leaves the neck exposed. And when you go into it, notice what I'm gonna do, I'm here, here, here. When I go for it, I'm gonna sort of twist a little bit and go into it, okay? So I'm not gonna like grab over here. I'm reaching for this, this grip here. As it happens, I cut an angle just a little bit and immediately go over top right here, okay? And then from here, you'll go right into that reverse grip you just did. And again, if you need to take your time to mess with it, you can. To finish the guillotine, here's where we want to be. Come on down. I want to get to my side here. Notice I'm not flat on my back. And I'm going to pull that elbow up high, push his head down to his knees. Just like this. So coming out for a second. So once we're here, we got our lock. We're just doing this motion. Side crunch, drive it again. And that is a guillotine, okay? Questions? All right, let's give that a try, guys. Again, play around the guillotine, and again, it's a great sweep because you, if you have your, you still have your butterfly guards, you can always sweep with it if you need to. Um, and if anybody's more of a triangle person, you're welcome to play around with that, okay? But the guillotine's a good move from this position because it works by, you're taking an arm away because you're worried about the arms, and then you go right for the neck. One, two, three.